name is Robert Randafir, I am from Romania and I am the first officer on board the Seabed Constructor. The Seabed Constructor is quite a new vessel. She was built in 2014 in Norway. The vessel is 115 meters long by 22 meters wide. She is powered by six diesel electric generators which can produce up to 17,000 horsepower. Her service speed is 12.5 knots while her maximum speed ever recorded is 15.6 knots which ensures that we can move swiftly from mission to mission all around the world. She can accommodate up to 102 people, however usually we are around 60 to 80 people on board depending on the mission and project we are engaged in. Additionally, the vessel is equipped with two ROVs which can operate up to 6,000 meters depth. And we also have a specially built and designed hangar on the back deck which houses eight AUVs. All in all, with a combination of state-of-the-art equipment and experienced crew in subsea operations that we have on board, the Seabed Constructor is more than up to the challenge for this unique and unparalleled survey operation that Option Infinity has set up. Uh, right now we're located inside of the AUV hangar. This is where all eight AUVs are stored. This is where we do all of the AUV maintenance. Um, this is where the AUVs get launched and also retrieved after a survey mission. So this is the online room where pretty much it's mission control, I guess the best way to describe it. This is where we monitor and, and operate all the AUVs that are scanning the bottom. This is also where we create all of the mission plans where all the AUVs will be scanning the seabed looking for any targets that we might be interested in. We monitor all the AUVs before they're launched. As they're recovered, you know, everything goes through the online room. But once we've recovered the survey data from all the AUVs, it is then uploaded to the server for the offline team to start the data processing. So once the AUV is on board, the data is downloaded and it comes up here to the offline room. Uh, it goes onto our servers. Our processors will take the data, download it into a readable format. And we go through the side scan and the multi-beam data to search for uh, sonar contacts, which we also call points of interest or targets. When we find these points of interest, we produce a report which goes to the Ocean Infinity consultant on board and they will make a decision along with us as to how to classify that target in terms of interest for ourselves. Will we go and look at it? How likely is it to be uh, the particular targets we're looking for at the time? What we operate here is an AUV. AUV stands for Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. It's an unmanned submarine that dives to extreme depths and surveys the ocean floor using different sonar arrays. All the AUVs that we have here, they're capable of going anywhere from 10 meters to 6,000 meters depth. Their max speed is around 4 to 4.5 knots. So once the AUV is launched, we dive it down to a certain altitude off the seafloor. So once the AUV reaches its given altitude, it begins its survey of the ocean floor. And once the survey is complete, the AUV comes to surface and we recover it and bring it back on the board. On this vehicle, we have multiple different sensors. We have side scan, sonar. It uses sonar to scan images on each side of the AUV, port and starboard. The side scan sensor produces a fan-shaped acoustic pulse that travels down to the seafloor. It reflects off of any objects or features and travels back to the sensor. With the orientation of the side scan transducers, essentially leaves a gap directly underneath the AUV, which is called the nadir gap. 
So that leads us to the multi-beam. The multi-beam is there to cover that gap. The multi-beam echo sounder creates a bathymetry image, which is a 3D image of the ocean floor. It also creates a 2D image called backscatter, which is very similar to what the side scan transducers generate. To get an idea of what a side scan sonar image looks like, imagine turning a flashlight on in a dark room. An object that's closest to you, its face will be highlighted, while the sides and back of the object will be cast in the shadow. This is what we are doing, but instead of using light, we are using sound. The side scan sonar can be operated at a low, high, or very high frequency. The low frequency allows us to operate the AUV at a higher altitude, giving us a greater range where the higher frequency gives us a better resolution, but it has to be operated at a lower altitude because it doesn't travel as far. We have cameras that take high resolution pictures, colored pictures. The AUV is also outfitted with a very low frequency sonar called a sub-bottom profiler that actually penetrates the surface of the ocean floor. Those low frequencies reflect off the different layers that are below the surface and give you a profiled image, uh, kind of like a cross section we also have a magnetometer on board the AUV. This is ultimately a big metal detector. Any type of metal debris that might end up on the ocean floor will create a specific signature through the magnetometer and will help us narrow in on what we might be looking for. Uh, we also have forward-looking sonars. It's essentially the eyes of the AUV. As it's moving across the ocean floor, the sonar looks out in front of it to identify any rough terrain that the AUV might be approaching to allow the AUV to successfully maneuver over or around the terrain that it's approaching. If the terrain is too tumultuous for the AUV to clear, reflexive avoidance will kick in. The AUV will do a 360 while at the same time adjusting its altitude to try to clear the terrain that it's approaching. It will do this a set number of times. If for some reason the AUV cannot clear the terrain at that point, it will backtrack down its original path to safety. The process starts with the client. The client gives us an area in which they would like us to survey with different parameters on what we might potentially be looking for. A mission request form is generated. Once we've received that form, we'll call for a task plan review meeting and then we discuss all the important information that will go into the task plan. And one of the most important things are the sensor settings, such as the side scan sonar, multi-beam echo sounder, and the sub-bottom profiler. And once we have all the settings confirmed and the task plan has been approved, we'll load it through Infinity View, which is our software for mission planning. That was designed and built specifically to utilize with the eight AUVs. It creates efficient mission plans to get the best coverage in the quickest amount of time. From there, we'll create the line spacing, uh, input the settings that they want as far as the multi-beam, side scan range, altitudes. Once the mission is created, then we'll overlay an image, which is the terrain of the seafloor. We can orientate all of our mission lines for the most efficient runtime of each AUV. Then sends it over to me. I upload it to the AUV. Infinity View generates a series of coordinates. The AUV will use these coordinates to survey the area that we're covering connecting the dots from coordinate to coordinate. The AUVs are the workhorses which go out and actually collect the data for us, but the vessel is the starting platform, so we need to position that vessel to the highest accuracy possible so we know where our data is that the AUVs are collecting. So we have two very high spec GPS systems which will position us anywhere in the world to within 10 centimetres. And then linked into that we have high spec MRU and gyro unit. So once that mission plan is uploaded, we go through a series of steps, which we call a pre-dive. This is a very extensive check on all the mechanics of the AUV, along with all the sensor arrays. Kind of think of it like a pre-flight checklist for an airplane. We have the same thing for launching an AUV. Make sure it's no loose cables, um, connections. Once we've gone through that pre-dive checklist, we then are ready to launch. We'll lift the AUV up, we'll bring it over to the stinger, and we'll open the back door, we'll lower the AUV into the water, and then we release it. And then it's off until it completes its total mission. Once the AUV is launched, 
It will dive. We will broadcast positions from the surface to the AUV to keep it on track. Then we will then move on to the next AUV, launching two, three, four, five, six, eight AUVs. Um, missions could be anywhere from an hour, anywhere to like 50 hours or greater. We have uh, two HIPOP 502 USBL positioning systems, which is how the vessel communicates with the AUV subsea. It's using uh, pulses of sound acoustically. It's how we uh, update the positions. It's how we gather data from the AUV whilst they're subsea. And it's how we uh, bring them back up to the surface when they finish their mission. So once we've left an AUV alone, we usually leave her for anywhere between 12 and 36 hours. When we come back to do handshakes with her, touch base with it, make sure it's online, uh, give it position updates to aid it along and make sure uh, it's given the best possible position that it can have. And complete its mission without any deviation. Therefore, by having correct position at the beginning of the dive, numerous times throughout its dive, and then at the end, it allows us to keep all the navigation well within specifications to allow for the best data collection possible. Once we're uh, ready to recover it, we then go establish communications with it, and then I start driving it back up, bring it to surface, and then it's the recovery process is a whole other deal done on the back deck. We'll receive um, a message from the AUV, and it's going to let us know that it's completed its mission. So what we'll do is we'll take off and we'll go to that known location where the AUV is. We'll drive it up to surface. We'll attach the line to it. We have two different ways we could uh, grapple the AUV. We have a PLT gun that uses compressed air where we can shoot the grapple out. When the AUV is further away, we have a longer line attached to it. Or if the AUV is closer to the ship, we could use the hand grapple that we hand throw to catch the recovery nose to recover the AUV. He tries to get between the, the nose and the nose cone. We have about four feet of line that comes out of the AUV. Looks like on his first shot, he may have had a good shot. Once the AUV is far enough away, he can start pulling the nose cone out of the AUV where we have about 30 meters of line. And he'll tie off the AUV to pull the AUV to the stern of the ship. All right, now the ship is on course and speed. They're gonna release the rope that they tied off to the ship. He's gonna call down to the operator for the launch recovery system. And he'll let him know when the rope's in the water so he can start using the winch to pull in the AUV. Hook it up to the stinger by the winch and we'll start pulling it in inside of the hangar. Once it's in the hangar, we'll hook up landline and we'll actually start downloading the data. And we then send it to the offline room, the geos to process. The AUVs are brought on board. Data is downloaded across a one gigabit high speed fiber optic network into what we see here, the nimble storage. This is the heart of the storage area network. I am a side scan sonar uh, specialist. So data are coming from AUV. So we have to go through to do detection. Here is, for example, a, a flat seabed showing some features like uh, small rocks, outcrops, and we have to find out if it's artificial or geology or any, anything we would like to, to see. One of my main jobs here is to uh, make and update the progress map. It's a good visual to see how much we've done, how much is left to go, and any issues that we may need to rerun. This is then given to the TSM, the client, so they can plan the next part of any surveys. So ROV stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle. They base their underwater robots that are controlled from the surface. Uh, its normal activities include inspection, maintenance and repair, and can also perform uh, subsea construction tasks. We have two ROVs on the seabed constructor, the Shillin HD35 and the Kiss Design Supporter 31. It's rated to 6,000 metres, which is the same as the Hugen AUVs. And this is the ROV control room. This is where we actually operate the ROV. Once a target has been found that requires further investigation, or we're tasked to do an operation subsea, we're then asked to deploy the ROV. We have a launch and recovery system which allows us to pick up the ROV. We'll open the hangar doors. We deploy the ROV out of the starboard side of the vessel. Uh, we then winch the ROV and the TMS on the main cable, which is the umbilical, down to whatever depth we're working on. The ROV is then docked out of its TMS. From the tether management system, and then we have a working 
length of around 1,000 metres of tether, which allows us a lot more freedom of movement. Once we're down on the seabed, we use the sonar to locate any objects that might be of any interest to us. But once we're upon those objects, we can use the manipulators to pick up smaller debris and put that into the ROV's work basket. For larger objects, we can uh, rig up debris to the ship's crane and bring that back straight onto the ship's back deck. Now this crane here that you see here is a 250-ton offshore crane. This crane can be used for subsea lifts, ship-to-ship -ship transfers, personal lifts, internal lifts. It can go down to about 3,000 meters depth and bring up some pretty heavy equipment. The ROV has a range of cameras around the sub. Uh, the main camera we will be using is the high definition camera. It gives us a crystal clear picture. One of the big problems we face subsea is obviously the lack of light. So if we're working at 3,000 or 4,000, even up to 6,000 meters, it's very difficult to obtain really high quality picture like you would if you're on the surface. So we have LED lights positioned along with the HD camera to give us incredible high definition picture and video to send to our survey department and our clients on shore. Once the mission is finished, we then fly the ROV and dock it back into the TMS. And using the winch once again, we bring the whole system back up to the surface and land it back inside the ROV hangar. So as you can see, I have a wealth of expertise on board. Each department has their own uh, field of speciality with a wealth of experience behind it. They have the AUV department, we have ROV, we have online survey, offline survey, the processing, and the marine departments. All obviously have their own goals and objectives uh, throughout the project, but it's very important that we collaborate these departments, interlink their communications to make sure that we're here for one common goal.